Hey folks, thanks for tuning in to another episode of Second Son Woodworks here on my YouTube channel. My name is Caleb and today I'm going to be showing you how I built this collapsible and reusable wooden Christmas tree. This is a great beginner woodworking project and it's an affordable way to decorate your home for the holidays. Stick around and I'll show you how I built it. The first step in the project was to lay out the main supplies that are used for this project which is pretty much just plumber's pipe and one by threes. Both of these materials you can pick up at just about any hardware store and they're not too expensive. You're also gonna need a drill bit that will match the diameter of the pipe that you decide to use. I opted for using 35 one by threes that were four foot long for the tree that I am building today, but the nice thing about this design is you could do more or less of the 1x3s depending on how tall you want your tree to be. This was a custom project that I was building for somebody last year and they had decided the height of the tree and so I got the number of 1x3s based off of that height. Each of the 1x3s is 3 quarter inches thick and I purchased 35 of them, so you can do the math. <laughs> okay, okay, I'll do it for you. 35 times 0.75 equals 26.25 inches. But that will only be the height of the wood. The actual overall height of the tree will be dependent upon the pipe and a terracotta pot, which you can see I'm bringing into my shop right now with the client. Listen in. Yeah. I kind of look like the look of this one, that's why I got yeah. it. But I also don't want to have, I mean, it doesn't matter that much. Right, well I can make, so, so if you imagine, the tree is gonna get cut out of this. Right. And so, and then the pole will go through the middle and it'll just sit on there. Okay. Um, I don't think she, uh, like, attaches it or anything. I think it's just kind of free, like gravity holds it all together, you know, kind of sit the Oh, yeah, sits and then you can other. rotate them or make any design Exactly, you like. yeah. yeah, as far as I could tell from that. So, I mean... <clears throat> How do you know on weight of the wood versus the, the depth of the face? Yeah, I mean, I'm sure there's maybe some sort of crazy <laughs> equation out there. But some I'm, mathematical equation. Yeah, but... Um, so, we ended up going with a different terracotta pot because both of those were just a little bit too small when it came to balancing the tree. And when I was referring to a she, I was referring to the article that I used as instructions for this project. Jaharn Quinn from S'more Home put together a really nice blog post on how to make this tree. I will put a link below in the description. For the trunk of the tree, I used three quarter inch black plumber's pipe, and I used two different pieces, one for the top section of the tree, and then one for the section of the tree that would be inside of the terracotta pot. And I used a coupling to join the two, and the coupling actually fit the bottom of the terracotta pot. You can see here that this terracotta is just a little bit bigger. But as you can see, the coupling fit perfectly, the little hole that was already drilled. The added benefit to this design is that it's super easy to take it all apart. Once I had the trunk of the tree and the base figured out, I went back over to the 35 pieces of one by three by four foot, and I clamped into my workbench using a couple clamps on one end and then a four by six clamped to the opposite end so that I could squish all of the boards together and now I will be marking out the tree which is super simple you just need a straight edge and you need to find the center of one of the boards uh, that will be the top of the tree and then make sure to subtract the size of the hole so that the top piece has enough width uh, to be able to drill a hole through it and then you can mark the outline of the tree along each of the pieces. And this line will ultimately be transferred over to the flat face, uh, but this is the overall shape of the tree. I also made sure to draw a line down the direct middle of the tree. And this line will once again be transferred to the flat face of each of these boards 
for the drill hole. And the drill hole will go right through the middle of each of these boards. After that, it was time to transfer the lines from the sides of each of these boards to the flat faces of each of these boards using a square. These three separate lines will serve as a reference for when I go to the miter saw to cut each of these boards down to length, as well as when I go to the drill press to drill a hole right through the middle. And I'll, I also used a hole punch to get the holes started for uh, the drill press. I had to do this for every one by three that I had, so that's 35 times, and it took a while. So why don't I speed this up a little bit? There we go. That'll make this whole section of the video a little bit faster, and hopefully you won't get as bored. As you can see, the lines are slowly getting farther out on each end of the one by threes that I'm doing, and that's as the tree is getting wider down near the bottom. Once I got into a rhythm, it was actually pretty quick to go through all 35 of these one by threes. As I mentioned earlier on in the project, this design could be used for a tree that is smaller or larger than the one that I am doing, and you would just increase or decrease the number of one by threes that are used and make sure you have a bigger pipe. I really like the idea of doing one of these trees that's just a bit smaller. Uh, so if somebody out there does that, let me know, send me photos. Okay, once I had finished transferring the lines and starting the holes, I went over to my drill press and installed one inch wide Forstner bit. Before moving on to drilling all of the holes for all of the pieces, I just wanted to do this first test piece, uh, and I ended up having to do the little hole punch on the other opposite side of the 1x3 so that I could um, do a complete hole through. The very first 1x3 will actually be over the coupling that I used to combine the two pipes, and thus the hole needed to be just a little bit wider than the holes uh, for all of the other boards. Uh, and you can see here that it inserted right over that coupling and it worked. And I think as I add more pipes, uh, there will be more stability. Once I had finished testing the fit of the hole, I went over to the miter saw and quickly cut that first piece down to the right length. And then it was time to move on to doing a bunch of drilling. And before doing all the drilling, I switched the bit that I had in the drill press uh, for a 7 8 inch bit. Since I'm using three quarter inch black galvanized steel pipe, this will give just a little bit of extra space uh, for the uh, pipe. So before drilling the holes for the other 33 one by threes, I went over to the pipe and once again, test fit uh, the one by three. And the fit was actually pretty tight and I ended up having to adjust a lot of the holes later on in the project, but it did work and it was time to drill all of the other holes. So since I needed to do 33 additional boards, uh, I set up both my drill press and my miter saw so that I could quickly drill the holes for each of the boards as well as cut them down to the length. And overall, it went pretty fast. But again, so that I don't lose you as a viewer, I'm going to go ahead and speed this up. I don't want any of you folks out there with ADHD to click away. So stick around and I'll speed this up. Now, as you sit back, relax and watch this ASMR-like woodworking video, I wanna take a moment to ask you to subscribe to my channel and hit the little bell icon next to it so you stay notified when I release new project videos. This really is a great way to help my channel out. It attracts new viewers and it also will ensure that you watch my videos as I publish them. In addition, you should go check out my other social media accounts, my Instagram and my TikTok, where I post uh, shorter videos and other content. Also, if you haven't checked out my website, you should check that out. And if you're interested in a custom woodworking project, or if you wanna buy some locally harvested wood, reach out. I am a fan of making relationships with other woodworkers 
makers, people who like to tinker, and uh, I like sharing knowledge, so reach out. Okay, now that I'm finally finished with cutting each of the boards and drilling each of the holes, I was able to line up all of the 1x3s on my workbench just to see how it looked. Everything looked fine, and it was time to start test fitting each of the boards onto the pipe that was mounted uh, into the terracotta pot. And this was the really first time that I was able to see the tree come into reality, which was a pretty cool experience. But a number of the holes needed to be drilled out just a bit more in order to make them slide down the pipe. So each time you see me walk away, I'm returning to the drill press and drilling out those holes just a little bit more so that they could slide easily onto the black pipe. But overall, the tree was looking really good and I was getting really excited. One of the best parts about this design is that each of the 1x3s sits freely onto the pipe and thus can be span around and you can then make the tree into different shapes. I think that's one of the main reasons why the client wanted this tree and you can see how endless the possibilities could be. But I needed to go ahead and sand each of the 35 pieces, which again is kind of a long process, but I wanted to ensure that each of the boards was somewhat smooth to touch so that when the client is setting it up and taking it down, it doesn't give her any splinters. But again, I don't want to lose you as a viewer, so I'm going to go ahead and speed this up just a little bit more. Wait, I've already increased this to 20 times speed, so I guess I'm just going to have to cut some of it out. You get the point, though. And just like that, I had all of the pieces sanded, and I was ready to set the tree up because the client would be coming over and picking it up very soon. We're now coming to the end of this project video. And I want to thank you for watching. Hopefully you found this video to be educational as well as useful. I'm hoping that there'll be a number of people who will build this tree and potentially send me some photos. This really is a great project for woodworkers who are just getting started. As you saw, the tools that are used are pretty easy and good ones to have on hand if you're going to be a woodworker. A miter saw and a drill press are two of the really essential tools. Anyways, I added a nice little ribbon at the top to make it look a little cooler. Huh. And the client actually sent me a photo a week or so after she picked it up of the tree after her and her family had fully decorated it for the holiday and it looked really nice. If I was to do this project again, I would put some sort of flange at the bottom of the pipe that's within the terracotta pot and I actually ended up recommending this to the client to give it just a bit of more stability uh, when it's all loaded with the pieces of wood. But overall, I was pretty satisfied with how this project went and I'd like to know what you think, so put some comments down below. Anyways, I appreciate you watching and uh, the client is showing up, so I'm going to go ahead and have to show her the tree and make sure that she is happy with it. Hey Betsy! Hello! Oh, I love it! Like it? Alright folks, that's it for today. Thanks again for watching and I hope you enjoyed this episode of Second Sun Woodworks. If you have any questions or comments, leave them below. Make sure to hit the subscribe button and stay tuned for another episode in the future. Alright, build something cool. Bye!